This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tung. With me, I have Martin Stiles and Arthur Wilda, the APHRS chair and HRS chair for the new 2020 expert consensus statement on sudden unexplained death. Martin and Arthur, welcome to Heart Rhythm TV. Thank you. Thanks, Rod. We're really lucky to have you representing two societies coming together during this very special month of October, which is Sudden Cardiac Death Awareness Month. And I think that's perfect timing to discuss this document. Arthur, can you just comment about what the significance of this really is, this global collaboration between societies? Yeah, thank you, Rod. The, I think that the main point of this document is that it is a worldwide consensus on how to deal with uh, sudden cardiac death victims and, and maybe even more important with their families. Uh, it used to be um, not very similar across the world and with this document endorsed by all the major um, societies, EP societies, uh, we now have a standard how to deal with these families. And Martin, I think this is the first time that these groups have come together to be able to have this document. What I thought was really special about it is it, it focuses obviously not on just the investigation of the decedents, but also it's very family-based and family-oriented. Can you comment on that? Yes, yeah, so this is the first document that takes not so much a disease-specific uh, approach, but a, a, a sort of a more holistic approach to the patient, the family, and even the wider community. And so we have sections on the multidisciplinary team, which is important. We have sections on the psychological care and genetic, genetic counseling, as well as your standard physician investigation of how somebody came to have this sudden cardiac arrest. Now, I'm sure everyone's gonna go through this document with interest, all the members of, of the various societies. What's really nice is that you have a top 10 take home messages in the document. Can you highlight some of the ones that you really want to stick with our members? Well, my, my personal preference is in the genetic part, what, how to deal with genetics in these investigations. It's obviously a great tool, but you should use it carefully and cautiously uh, and not overuse it in particular. Uh, if you have no phenotype, you have to be careful with it. And if there is a phenotype, it's a very useful tool. Uh, and the other part that I would like to emphasize is that it's a multidisciplinary effort. You need a multidisciplinary team with involvement of geneticists, involvement of a pathologist, of a psychologist, importantly, and all that is in the paper. And, and Martin, what about the take home message that you want to get across to our viewers? Well, I think that it's important in this document that really for the first time, that the role of investigation of the family has been highlighted. And, uh, you know, there is, um, after we talk about the appropriate genetic counseling and the uh, physical investigation uh, and the genetic investigation of the proband, then an acknowledgement of the family who really just want to know why. Uh, an acknowledgement of those questions and how you might go about sorting out the why for them so that future people can be protected from the same fate of the, as their relative. For those that are trying to start an SCA clinic or genetics clinic, because and how, what advice would you give to early career, mid career that don't have a clinic? You guys are the leaders in the field and have a very sophisticated multidisciplinary approach. What advice could you give us for how to start these clinics? Well, my, as I just emphasized, I think you can do without a multidisciplinary team. So if you are in a center without a genetic support or a geneticist, I think you shouldn't start it or start with a good collaboration with a center that has a geneticist. In my country, we can travel easily from center to center, so that's quite easy. I guess in the United States, you can do a lot uh, through the internet with this, but you need close collaboration with other disciplines. Yeah, and I think- Martin, I think... how you evolved your center? Yeah, I think the key thing is to get a good team around you. And so you, mean, you can't start from day one with a great team. So you've got to start somewhere. So I think reaching out to an already established um, genetics investigation center. And I mean, I think, you know, you have to go across traditional referral boundaries um, with this. You, you, you need to um, 
you know, and because families spread across traditional referral boundaries and we have patients scattered all across New Zealand. We have patients in Australia. Just this week, I, I received a genetic result from Liverpool, UK. So, you know, it, it, it really is um, a borderless kind of uh, um, uh, investigation scenario. So I think just reaching out to people who are already established, looking how they do things and, you know, get a team together and do it yourself and hopefully do it better. And the other thing that I really like is, is really the mention of how to counsel not only medically and, you know, the genetic basis, but really look at the psychological counseling, the grief counseling and peer support for those um, that, that are still around in the family. The reason why that's so important is that we obviously specialize in VT ablation and we actually created a shop support group. And we find it's really useful to have the members of the family that are affected as well that have never gotten shocked, but to see that sort of, see how, they, how they're devastated by the, the situation as well. So I think it's really important, not only multidisciplinary, but to bring in all aspects of the genetics, the medical and the psychological. And one of the really special parts of our society is the global nature of EP. And Martin, this is really a big moment for APHRS because it's an APHRS led document. And from what I understand, Arthur, came over to New Zealand pre-COVID and was relaxing on the beach with you while you guys were opining over this document? Yeah, that's right, Rod. So yeah, this is the first APHRS-led full partnership document uh, with HRS. And so, you know, it's a part of maturing of the APHRS society and uh, we're really pleased to be, to be leading it. And it was a different time and uh, Arthur came straight from the European winter to the New Zealand summer and stayed at my house at the beach I can tell you he had the palest legs on the beach, uh, and, uh, but we had a great time. We, we, we edited in the morning and we toured in the afternoon after. It was, it was good times. It was a wonderful time. I can all advise you to go to New Zealand. Well, Dr. Stiles and Dr. Wilda, thank you very much for being experts in the field and bringing this document together. I'm sure all of our members have a lot to, to read and learn from this document. It's the perfect timing for this month where SCA awareness is, is all the rage here. And this is something that we feel passionate about as electric physiologists. We either improve quality of life or we're looking for ways to prevent sudden death. So for all of our viewers, look for this. It's coming out online on Heart Rhythm Journal as well as the Journal of Arrhythmia uh, coming this month. Thank you very much for joining us on Heart Rhythm TV. Thanks very much, Rob.